Thank you for joining me for another one of my videos. My name is Cliff. This series of videos that I'm doing is called 99 Problems But My God Ain't One. This is number 45 and I'm calling it uh, the slider uh, on the war agenda. The slider. Okay, this video is going to talk about the media and how they want to handle any specific interviews uh, relating to the wars in the Middle East and basically the war agenda that um, they are polluting our minds with. Um, you know, watch these series or uh, these clips and you'll get a little bit of a understanding of how they are manipulating us into our thoughts uh, relating to the war propaganda. Factions as well, despite the Kurds who have long wanted to break away completely there in the north. So even though you say most Iraqis want to see this country stay together, considering it's so fragile at this moment, is it more likely as we approach this week that it could become three semi-autonomous states? I don't think so. I think the tendency in the Arab world recently, meaning in the last 20 years or so, has been for much greater decentralization so that an autocratic or dictatorial central government uh, cannot rule with an iron fist. This is the problem, the big problem of the whole Arab world for Egypt, Syria, Libya, Iraq, uh, Yemen, uh, Sudan, the whole Arab world. The problem of the last really three generations has been military rule, centralized autocratic uh, security and military rule. And people need to find an alternative. The alternative of breaking up these countries and to smaller countries is, is not very attractive, not very viable, and not very likely. Sudan did it peacefully. South Sudan broke away about two and a half years ago, and they're, they're not doing very well. So I think people understand that you have strength in numbers. Uh, there is a tradition of coexistence among these groups, uh, but there's also a tradition of people uh, pushing back against centralized autocratic uh, rule, and we saw that under Saddam, we saw it under Assad in Syria, and we're seeing it. Um, we're seeing it now. So the formula that has to be achieved is a really tricky one, and this is a formula that that uh, challenges all the Arab countries. Uh, which is how do you get a pluralistic, inclusive, credible government that uh, makes all the citizens feel that they have a role in their government system without any one power to dominate the other? They, they Looks like we're just having an issue with our connection there, but and we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing it now. So the formula that has to be achieved is a really tricky one, and this is a formula that that uh, challenges all the Arab countries. Uh, which is how do you get a pluralistic, inclusive, credible government that uh, makes all the citizens feel that they have a role in their government system without having any one power to dominate the other? They, they Looks like we're just having an issue with our connection there, but certainly making the point that um, throughout the Middle East that the lesson has been that more people accomplish more when they're together rather than um, being fractured and apart. Um, it doesn't appear that way with some of the... I mean, if you can see your your neck right there, what you have on your tattoo, 9-11, remember, and a picture of the Twin Towers. You know, some Republicans out there have been saying that Ron Paul would be very dangerous for this country because he wants to bring troops like you back from your post from all over the world. Well, I think it would be even more dangerous to start nitpicking wars with other countries. Someone like Iran, yeah, Israel is more than capable. Of all right, we just lost our tech connection, unfortunately, with Dana. Dana, stand by. If you can hear me, we're going to get back. You want to go to Candy Crowley over at Mitt Romney headquarters. Uh, people are beginning to fill up that room over there, Candy. I mean, if you can see your, your neck right there, what you have on your tattoo, 9-11, remember, and a picture of the Twin Towers. You know, some Republicans out there have been saying that Ron Paul would be very dangerous for this country because he wants to bring troops like you back from your post from all over the world. Well, I think it would be even more dangerous to start nitpicking wars with other countries. Someone like Iran, Israel is more than capable of... All right, we just lost our tech connection, unfortunately, with Dana. Dana, stand by. If you can hear me, we're going to get back. You want to go to Candy Crowley over at Mitt Romney headquarters. Uh, people are beginning to fill up that room over there, Candy. 
No, I think he's speaking from his soul. I think in the United States we've made tremendous progress in terms of black elites having access to unprecedented opportunities. But in terms of the black working class and the black poor, including white, red, and yellow poor and working classes, they have been devastated by the policies of the last 30 years or so. But the, poli the policies, all the policies, I mean... Uh, oh, it goes know, back to Reaganism back. all the way through Clinton. Because you, you financialize at the top with the oligarchic economy, greed-driven, obsessed with profits by any means, and then you've got privatizing of public education, privatizing of public prisons, and then you've got militarizing, where, you, of course, the national security state expands, drones dropping bombs on innocent people, the war crimes. You've got attacks on whistleblowers. Brother Julian Assange, I was, I was blessed to talk with him this week. You financialize at the top with the oligarchic economy, greed-driven, obsessed with profits by any means, and then you've got privatizing of public education, privatizing of public prisons, and then you've got militarizing, where, you, of course, the national security state expands, drones dropping bombs on innocent people, the war crimes. You've got attacks on whistleblowers. Brother Julian Assange, I was, I was blessed to talk with him this week. Bradley Manning, these are other very courageous folk dealing with trying to tell the truth about the secrets and dirty wars. And, and so we're, 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 Would you say that we're all, you know, those things uh, clearly matter deeply to you, but absolutely. things like, you know, uh, uh, you've got an African American president, which I suspect you never thought you'd see in your lifetime. I never thought. There are a lot of white people who voted for him. Absolutely. You've got a lot uh, in absolutely. 2008. A lot more African American voters came out and voted as a percentage than That's ever right. before. That's right. So things, I mean, some things have changed a lot for the better. Oh, they? Well, there's no doubt there's been progress, my brother. Because you, you financialize at the top with the oligarchic economy, greed-driven, obsessed with profits by any means, and then you've got privatizing of public education, privatizing of public prisons, and then you got militarizing, where you, of course. The national security state expands, drones dropping bombs on innocent people, the war crimes. You've got attacks on whistleblowers. Brother Julian Assange, I was, I was blessed to talk with him this week. Bradley Manning, these are other very courageous folk dealing with trying to tell the truth about the secrets and dirty wars. And, and so we're, 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 Would you say that we're all, you know, those things uh, clearly matter deeply to you, but absolutely. things like, you know, uh, uh, you've got an African-American president, which I suspect you never thought you'd see in your lifetime. I never thought There are a lot of white people who voted for him. Absolutely. You've got a lot uh, in Absolutely. 2008. A lot more African-American voters came out and voted as a percentage than That's ever right. before. That's right. So things, I mean, some things have changed a lot for the better, haven't oh, they? Oh, well, there's no doubt there's been progress, my brother. And I was blessed uh, last night to be at University of Sheffield. We had a magnificent memorial for Malcolm X. I was invited to Cambridge University, my dear brother Simon Goldhill. I had dialogues with Paul Gilroy, dialogues with M. M. McKay, dialogues with my dear brother Ben Oakry, and the result is what? Unbelievable progress on one level, but Malcolm X used to say, you don't stab folk in the back nine inches, pull it out six inches, and celebrate your progress. And that's you where you've got poverty. I mean, in the States, we got States. poverty. I mean, I've yeah. just read the Institute of Fiscal Studies here, where you've got policies that are going to push a million precious children here in Britain into poverty, too. Why, why are you disappointed with Obama because you were supported him in 2008 and you said uh, of him more recently April 2011 you said he was a black mascot of Wall Street oligarchs and a puppet of corporate plutocrats that's a bit yeah. rude no just trying to tell the truth it might be a bit provocative but it's not hateful it's just uh, a biting because I was so deeply disappointed when I first talked with my dear brother and supported him I did 65 events for him mm. the first time my question was what is your relation to the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Fannie Lou Haber, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel and Dorothy Day. We talked for four hours. And he gave me the impression that he was coming out of this tradition in a significant way. Well, when I look at Martin King, he dies carpet bombing in Vietnam. Those are war crimes then. Drones today, war crimes again. Poverty is trying to organize poor people. Not a mumbling word about poverty. We have the highest levels of poverty since 1960 in this regard. But are you saying Obama is actually responsible for war crimes? Is that how you see it? I think that they commit war crimes when they meet on Tuesday and have a killer list. And if they did it once or twice and said, my God, we've got collateral damage. Yes, but we've got over 4,000 innocent civilians dead and over 219 innocent children dead. That, they strike me as war crimes. I'm old school in this. I said the same thing about George Bush. 
Same thing about Barack Obama. Same thing about any head of a nation state that uses instrumentalities of violence to kill innocent people. Yes. We, 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 t we touched on some of the things which, which you accept sure. have improved and have improved sure. in your country sure. and improved here. What about, what about racism itself? Has that, has that changed? I think on an individual, interpersonal level, it is much better. And that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. You all in Britain have the flowering of these wonderful personal inter interpersonal relations and so forth. But institutional racism is still at work in the United States, just as institutional so racism is still at work here in Britain. So really, we're always talking about race, class, gender, and empire, and sexual orientation as a way of trying to keep track of the humanity of people. Would you also, though, accept that some, some people use race as an excuse? I mean, oh. there was the, Lauren Hill the other day, yeah. the, you know, the singer yeah. who's, who's three months for tax evasion, she said, I'm a child of former slaves who had a system imposed on them. I had an economic system imposed on me. She fiddled yeah, the taxes. I, I think That's idea. silly. So she's, she's stretching too far. But, I mean, she's a she's a great artist, but she's stretching so, too far. No doubt about that. So, so where where are we now then? What do you? How do you see? You know, you you're disappointed in in the first African American president. Many people think he's a lot better than some of well, the well, alternatives. He was better than the right wing. Right. Oh, absolutely. But There's so no doubt so that. but so where do you think we are now? Where do you think we're going now in the United well, States? Well, I think in my country, which is both a, pre a very precious experiment in democracy and also an adventure in an empire, that we're in a very very bleak place because we have a choice between a far right party and a centrist neoliberal party, and we don't get the kind of focus on, I mentioned poverty before, you got 22% of American children living in poverty, 40% of red, 40% of brown, 40% of black children living in poverty in the richest nation in the history of the world. That's more than obscene. 1% of the population own 42% of the wealth. The top 400 individuals have wealth equivalent to the bottom 150 million. That's spiritually profane. So, so do you, I mean, is, I'm interested that a lot of your conversation has been about class yes. rather oh, than race. That's true, that's true. But that does not mean in any sense that the many racial questions which you've talked about in your lifetime are solved. That's exactly right. But for me, brother, Kevin, it's, it's about how do we try to be decent, honest, and have some integrity in a moment in which so many people are suffering, no matter what color no matter where they are. And we're living in a moment now where people are more and more indifferent to forms of criminality. We've gotten used to certain kinds of forms of criminality, so we overlook, and we become more and more callous to catastrophe, impending ecological catastrophe, economic catastrophe for our working people here, wrestling with immigration, our precious Eastern European brothers and sisters, our precious black immigrants, are they being treated with dignity? Those are the kind of questions, and neither party in either country are really speaking with them, I think, with the level of passion that Martin Luther King Jr. would want.